Hello everyone! In today's video, I'm going to show the steps on how to connect a MIDI keyboard to Band in a Box for Mac, and how to record a MIDI track and change a MIDI patch. Now these steps are specifically for the Mac version. It is a little bit different if you're using the Windows version of Band in a Box. So we do have a different tutorial video for that. And if you'd like to see that, we'll have a link for it in the description of this video. To start off, it's always best practice to make sure that if you have any other DAW programs that they're completely closed, so that way you're for sure sending the MIDI data from your keyboard to Band in a Box and not somewhere else. So for example, right here I can see there's a dot underneath my GarageBand icon in the uh, dock of my Mac. So that means it is still open. So I would just right click it, then select quit. And now that dot has disappeared, so now I know it's completely closed. And the other thing to keep in mind is that some MIDI keyboard companies provide drivers for their devices, and sometimes they uh, post updates for those drivers as well on their website. So it's always a good idea to double check with your um, devices company to make sure that you have everything you need downloaded and installed. The other good thing to keep in mind is sometimes if you open Band in a Box first and then connect your MIDI keyboard, it might not be recognized properly. So it's always best to make sure you plug in your keyboard first, then open Band in a Box. If you forget, then you can just close out of it, then reopen the program, and then you should be good to go. To make sure that your keyboard is connected, go up to the Options menu of your Band in a Box, then go to MIDI Input Output Ports. In the top menu, you should see the name of your MIDI keyboard. I'm using the X key. And then just to make sure, the rest of the instruments listed here should all be set to MIDI plugins. Once that is all set, you can click OK. And now you'd be ready to press the keys on your keyboard and you should be able to hear them. There you go. So, how do you record from your MIDI keyboard? Well, if you're in the classic view, that would be just this red record MIDI button here. Or if you're in the modern view, it's this red circle here. Just as an aside, the way that I quickly switch between the classic and the modern view is the keyboard shortcut control and the letter T as in Timothy. Now I know with Max, a lot of the time you would use command instead of control, but for this specific one, it is the control key and the letter T. Control is just to the left of your command and option key. So uh, let's get back to it. Click the record button. And this is a window that's for recording both audio and MIDI. Since we're not recording audio this time, select the record audio to drop down menu and select none. And then under the record MIDI to drop down menu, we'll select what track we want to record the MIDI to. Um, so for this one, how about I just select utility one. Now you can select a specific bar or a specific chorus to start recording from, but for this demonstration, I'll just start from the beginning of the song. And then once you're ready, you can click record. And then once you're ready to stop, you can just click the stop button at the top. Now, if you don't like your recording, if you made a mistake, you can click take again and then re-record. Uh, the other option here is if you have this checkbox checked, it will then copy your recording to um, the whole song rather than having to record every single chorus. 
um, but I'll just leave this unchecked. If you like your recording, you can click OK, keep take. If you listen back on it later, you can always re-record another time as well. Uh, now my recording, you can see here, is on the utility track one, and I'll exit out the view meter there. And you can see it has a trombone um, patch loaded to it. So I did that purposefully before I started recording so I can demonstrate how to change that. Because I don't think a trombone will necessarily sound all that good with a Celtic jig song. So uh, first you want to click on it in the mixer. And then uh, in this menu, go to select MIDI instrument patch. In the secondary menu here, you can select one of the favorite patches at the bottom here, but if you want to see the full list of possible MIDI patches, go to select general MIDI patch. And then in this window, you can select whatever instrument you want. Um, so how about the bright piano? Okay, and let's listen back on the recording. Okay, so just some simple arpeggios. You might want to have something more interesting, but for demonstration's sake, that's okay. Now, uh, you may notice that when I was playing on the keyboard, it has a different sound to it. It sounds like a glockenspiel. So if you want to change the instrument patch on that, you would need to do it on the through track. So sometimes the through track might not show in your mixer. So how we reveal that is first click the eye icon in the bottom right hand corner of your mixer. You can select show all or just click on through in order to show that track. And now it's just the same steps as before to change a MIDI patch. So you click on the track in the mixer. Go to select MIDI instrument patch, then select general MIDI patch. And in the window, you can select whichever instrument you want. Uh, how about the bright piano? Uh, so that way it's the same as before. Then click OK. Now when I press on my keys, it sounds like a piano. And you can also see here that uh, the volume was changing in the meter when I pressed on the key. So that's how you can both see and hear that it's also working. So those are the basics for MIDI with Band in a Box for Mac. If you have any questions about this, please let us know in the comment section below.